weather was extremely cold. It was zero to 25 below zero. It snowed, rain, sleet, I think even hailed. We had every piece of weather that I think was available. And the wind came down off of the North Sea, across Holland, across Belgium, and just cut you in two. It was so cold. You have to learn to eat, sleep, and live in snow and cold, and your old soaking wet. You just can't think, but you have to think. And if you don't uh, get a clear head, by, you're not going to last too long. We tried to stay warm the best we could. There was no, uh, no houses we could go into. You stumped on the ground. You walked around, you moved, wiggle your toes, but you were, no matter what you did, you were cold. What I did prize the most, I had received three pairs of socks. <laughs> to an infantryman, a pair of warm socks was a very prized possession. We were always told, keep your feet dry and warm. Of course, that was impossible. The snow at that time was sometimes as high as waist deep. We slept outside in a foxhole or on the ground. I never saw the inside of a building or a tent, I don't think, except once. And I might as well have been outside. You become immune to the cold. You're, you're practically freezing to death, but you don't know it anymore. You just, you just don't feel it. You got a job to do and you concentrate on that and that, that eases the pain of the cold weather. The ball started on December the 16th, but it was Christmas Day before we got any air support because the weather was so bad along with the snow and the cold. But on Christmas Day, it was bitter cold, but the sun was out. And they flew the planes and they were drop the flies to us and also strafe enemy positions for us. So Christmas Day yeah, for combat was a good day. Instead of celebrating real peaceful and everything, the Germans attacked and we were under a heavy artillery barrage. We got orders to pull back. The entire division pulled back seven miles, but a platoon from each company was left behind as a delaying factor. My platoon drew the short straw. And we were almost annihilated. We left quite a few guys behind, dead and wounded. Christmas dinner for us was a can of sea rations and hot black coffee. Yeah, Christmas Day. <laughs> Retreating three times. E eating Christmas dinner and sitting next to a coal pile. No, we, uh, let's put it this way, we didn't doubt that we couldn't win. I mean, that's, uh, we, I think, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, the entire Third Army had that, because Patton, well, put that into us by being our leader and coming up there with us. And he says, we will, and we may be, we won't. He says, we will, and we will. We're going to conquer, we're going to go. Yeah, when we started going east, we knew the battle was turning, yes. Because Patton was up there, and Patton, of course, was gung-ho. Do we do not retreat? You do not take the second attempt to take a piece of territory. You, uh, you counterattacked, and that's what he did. The men had all, uh, they had confidence in General George Patton. He didn't want to stand still. He said, once you got to move them backwards, he said, you got to keep up. You don't want to give them a chance to stand Patton and, 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 and be able to fight you again. You got to keep pushing them. Push, 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 push. That was all he wanted to do. And he ran out of gasoline because of, in France because of that. He, he got so far ahead of everybody and he had to stop and wait for the gasoline to catch up with him. I mean, George Patton went through there, and we, every time we set the gun up to shoot, he'd be 50 miles down the road and we couldn't shoot because we hit our own troops. 